What's up everybody, Coach Mills here coming at you with a brand new video where we're going to be breaking down the top 5 agents of patch 1.07. Yes, with all the buffs and nerfs and different things going on with the meta, I thought I would give you the best 5 agents if you want to carry your team and climb or if you're struggling to figure out who to main, we got the perfect agent for you in this video, so make sure you watch it to the end. But the Game Leap website is your one-stop shop to improve at any of the agents here in this video. We got in-depth advanced VOD reviews, tips and tricks, and much, much more. Do yourself a favor and go check it out in the links down below and be well on your way to become broken. And I can't wait to see you there. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Now, kicking it off with agent number five. This is an agent that got some insane buffs and perhaps went from bottom of the barrel to one of the best agents in the entire game right now, and it's none other than Breach. You see, Breach not only got an extra flash, which is phenomenal, by the way, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, he also got an extremely huge buff in the fact that his concussion makes it so people that are scoped in can no longer scope, it unscopes them, and they can't rescope until concussion is over. And on top of this, his ultimate moves faster, and did we mention his flash is actually flash quicker? There's so much that went into the fact that Breach is just really Really, really good right now all of these just combine together to make breach all of a sudden very very powerful now that being said however there is some things you need to think about before you pick up breach in your matches the first thing is one of breach's greatest weaknesses is that when he flashes from further away it's harder for him himself to follow up on his plays and typically he's a very team centered agent this is perhaps the only mark against breach and in my opinion if you want to climb with breach you should be setting up in a duo because breach really requires that teamwork and if you have an aggressive duelist or an other initiator that can go in with you and follow up on these plays that you're making where you're flashing multiple areas again and again where you're clearing the entire site because that's what you can do on new breach you can clear one cubby you can check the other you can flash the other you can just take control of an entire site with so many space creating abilities and punish enemy abilities i mean breach might be now one of the most proactive team-based characters in the game and realistically also as an added benefit on breach you should almost never be losing to a close hiding player you should never be losing to enemies on eco so how many times have you been playing your games you've been rocking assault rifles or whatever and enemies with shotguns or stingers or whatever the case may be they actually win that round because they got a couple of cheese kills with breach this will not happen you can literally check every single cubby i mean think about a map for example let's talk about like ascent going a on attack right you can check the corner with your flash you can go on point and check the box with your aftershock you can concuss the back of sight you can flash tree you can close the door i mean you could just do this all over the place like how many abilities do you have to really gain point control and that's why breach is in our number five spot now moving on to the next agent we got to talk about is an agent that has always been top tier in pro play and is very very good in ranked play and received no nerfs even being one of the best agents in the entire game period and that's cypher cypher has a crazy high pro pick rate and in ranked play he is pretty dominant especially at the higher ranks you see now though a lot of players are getting used to playing against cypher and you got to get pretty crafty with your cypher traps typically the obvious traps are no longer going to work so you need to keep that in mind you have to be pretty crafty and be always experimenting and changing things up on cypher and if you use one trap location in a match and the enemy get caught by it they won't get caught by that same trap again so you need to be constantly changing up where you're placing them on top of that a really predominant strategy with cyphers in pro play is pushing up to take space only to protect it with a camera so you're putting cameras in like a cubby you're not trying to find any aggressive information when you're playing attack you're basically just setting it up to block off a potential aggressive play from the enemy defender so this is a really really powerful strategy and something you should be doing on cypher and on top of that a lot of high level cypher players and pro cyphers will actually be just guarding the flank themselves so one cypher can put a camera on one end and then hold hold somewhere in the middle for example and you could potentially block off entire avenues of enemy flanking and the reason you do this is you don't need your entire team to bait and default you don't need all five of you to stack and default to bait out enemy utility realistically you only need like three of you to be there and your cypher could be on the flank guarding all of these potential flank plays because that is the way that enemies either get in a position to cut off your rotation or set up for a flank play or whatever the case may be cypher could shut that down just like that and the last thing i gotta tell you about cypher a tip for you is 
make sure that if you are planning on giving up site which can be a strategy if you're playing on site a cypher you don't have to hold your ground you can leave if you want to leave you can leave it's better than dying right but a cypher camera that is really high up can be vital for retakes it can be absolutely overpowered for retakes and sometimes some teams will actually put a really high camera up on a point just for retake sake now you're not going to go into your camera until you're ready for the retake so enemies don't spot it out and you're not going to actually fire anyone with your camera instead you're just going to ping where they're location is from that high up position so you and your team can basically make a game plan to secure this corner this corner this corner and they automatically know that these corners no enemies are in it's a very powerful strategy that's being used at high level play and you can definitely adopt it into your ranked games as well now moving on to agent number three and this is the agent that many pros including someone like tens are saying is the most powerful agent right now a lot of people are saying it and he just ekes out our top three spot and it's none other than sova you see sova has multiple ways to force through action with information gathering abilities like recon and his drone of course now speaking of recon if you want to learn some really easy to learn ones but very useful recon darts then definitely go check it out on the game leap website we're going to be uploading tons of brand new sova courses coming soon so look out for that but back to the video on top of this recon bolt can flush out operas which it's actually one of the few abilities that can now the concussion can but recon bolt is another ability where if an opera is holding like a close angle or something they get tagged they can get wall banked without you peeking them or typically they're just going to completely relocate because they don't want to be seen they don't want to be wall banked so that is one of the few ways to flush out an opera with that recon and the fact that it's on a cooldown it is just an insane ability that is so useful you can use it aggressively defensively to shut down offers i mean it's just a fundamentally amazing ability for setting up plays and getting a lot of value now on top of this players like sinatra are rocking untraditional weapons like the Ares and the odin specifically with sova because you can use these really insane rollouts on defense to see people wherever they are on the map through a wall bangable object or a wall bangable surface and then you could just destroy them with these areas in odin and there's so many breakable walls when you have a heavy weapon like that and you can really see how sinatra uses them to maximum effectiveness so that is just one of the many things that you could do on sova that is still legitimately viable in ranked play and can actually be dominant at times if enemies don't know how to counter you on top of that sova has perhaps the highest skill ceiling in the game with infinite to learn there is never something that you cannot learn on sova if you really want to master an agent that is going to be able to carry you through any rank and it's going to really show how much effort and time you put into developing your skills and learning how to do all these crazy rollouts, then Sova is the perfect agent for you. Now, as a last tip I have for you, in my personal opinion, right now, the most powerful duo that you could be playing in ranked is Breach and Sova. Very good together in ranked play. They combo really well together where you can gather information. Your Breach can force them to be flushed out. Breach essentially has the tools to convert on that information you gather. Sometimes you're going to get some information about someone and your killjoy is just going to look at you like, what am I supposed to do about it? You go and you kill them. But your Breach is going to be able to follow up on that play. No matter where they are, if you discover where they are on point, he can instantly force them to swing out or flash them, make a play on them, whatever the case may be. That's why this combo is so good together. They really go hand in hand, and I think it's going to be a really great combo. If you got a buddy, you got a partner that you really want to climb with, one of you should pick up Sova and one of you should pick up Breach in this meta. Now moving on to agent number two on this list, and this is an agent that has slight favorable pick over Brimstone in pro and ranked play, and with his multi-use kit, honestly this is one of the best solo queue agents in the entire game right now, and that's Omen. So Omen has a lot of things going for him. I mean, frankly, first off, he has better smokes than Brimstone. You might be asking, better smokes than Brimstone, what do you mean by that? Well, first off, he gets them over and over again on cooldown, which is fantastic. So he can use multiple smokes throughout the course of a game. And the second thing, which in my opinion is the most important aspect of Omen smokes, is that you can use them from across the map. You could be in mid lurking to cut off rotation on attack and help smoke your entry or smoke off heaven for your team all the way pushing on the other side of the map. You can be on defense on B site and smoke the A entrance as enemies are trying to push on to help delay and create a lot of pressure on the enemy attack. Attackers. There is just so much you could do with the fact that Omen Smokes go across the map that it's definitely one of the most powerful things on the agent. 
Now on top of that, Paranoia is one of the best flashes in the game with powerful anti-push plays where you could turn an enemy joint rush push into a 3k and specifically playing in areas where you can abuse how far it stretches, how far it goes down along sightline. That can be a way that you get a ton of value on Omen. Now, on top of that, his ultimate can help him gather information, which is something that few agents can do in the entire game. Not many can gather information, and that's just something else that Omen could do as icing on the cake. In ranked, though, you're going to be filling your vital smoke role that everyone needs on every single team, while also giving you offensive power and playmaking abilities. In my personal opinion, every single person should learn a little bit of Omen because if you need that smoke and you're not a designated controller player, Omen can pretty much do it all with aggressive plays, smoke plays, information gathering ability. I mean, he just got it all. So definitely do yourself a favor, pick up some Omen right now. Now moving on to the first and most powerful agent in the entire game right now, you know her, you love her, none other than Sage. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sage is dead. It's really really Jet. Jet is the most powerful solo agent in the game right now, especially as a solo queue player. Jet is absolutely dominant in the right hands. Now, it's kind of funny though, because Jet went full circle. I mean, first we all thought she was going to be nuts because of her mobility. We're like, this agent is going to be broken. And then she came out and everyone's like, this agent is actually trash. And now it turns out she's actually broken. Surprise, surprise. We were all right all along. But the thing is, Jet goes hand in hand with both shotguns and ops. So first off, Jet is the best agent in the entire game for cheesing out kills with close range weapons. Whether it's hiding in a cubby with a shotgun, whether it's trying to cheese out a shorty kill or a stinger kill or whatever the case may be, Jet is one of the few agents that can actually convert on a kill and get out. And she can also just leave if she doesn't think she's going to be able to get a kill. And of course, with shotguns, she can also fly in aggressively and get some cheese kills. She is just really good on eco rounds. Because she's so powerful on eco rounds, she's another thing the enemies have to play around. That is why she goes hand in hand with shotguns and just close range weapons. Now, as far as opping on Jet, and this is the most important thing that you need to master and the thing that you need to think about when you're playing Jet, Jet can fundamentally op differently than every other agent in the game. Instead of just holding a defensive angle like you would be with a Sage or whatever character that you're opping on, you can actually swing out on Jet and peak angles aggressively, like out of Hookah on defense, for example, or out of Showers on Bind, or you could push up defense on mid. I mean, there's a lot of different examples everywhere. Just watch someone like Wardell, how aggressively he will push angles or he will push forward to get a sightline that anyone else wouldn't be able to get. No one else in their right mind would be pushing all the way out on defense to get this really tiny sight line, but Jet can do it, and Jet can do it without dying, because every other character would die in that scenario, but Jet won't, and that is what you need to learn. You need to learn how to be very aggressive, even in scenarios where other offers wouldn't be, and still convert on a kill, because enemies aren't going to be expecting it. How in the world are you supposed to be expecting that sort of aggression from a Jet, especially when you're musical chairs opping which is what i like to call when you are mixing up where you're holding sometimes you hold this side then you hold this side then you hold this side and if you do that and play it aggressively enemies just can never play around you like they can't what are they gonna do invest a flash or paranoia or whatever every single corner no they just can't do that and that is why jet and opping is so dominant right now and if you can master this aggressive form of opping you're going to be able to farm people all the way up the ranks. Now, that being said, however, the most important thing besides that is you cannot be afraid to entry on Jet. Often, Jet can be a feast or famine where a bad Jet feels terrible to have on your team or to play, and a good Jet can feel oppressive. In order to be that oppressive Jet, you need to be really engaging. When your teammates set up a recon for information or a flash with breach or whatever the case may be, you need to not be afraid to dash in aggressively and take that space that your teammates create for you or that opening that your teammates give. Jet can really capitalize on that right away. There's no window of time where an enemy could slip in and take that space from her if your teammates secure it. So that is what you need to be not afraid to do on Jet. And you're going to have a really good time in this patch 1.07. Now, the dominant patch 1.07, GameLeap.com has in-depth VOD reviews, advanced tips and tricks, and everything you need in order to climb with up-to-date videos released daily. So go check it out in the links down below and be well on your journey to climb the ranks of Valorant with ease. Definitely let me know what you think of the list in the comments down below and what you would change. That's all we got for you today. I'm Coach Mills. And of course, until next time.